Okay guys, last year when I was doing the leave insert live, um, there was a couple of questions where I had to redo it and um, there was a bit of discussion um, about which was the correct way to do it. And one such question was a question that was a, a, a repair question. You were given this little story and you were told that, oh, you need to, there's a such and such chance that you'll have to pay for this repair and then if it doesn't work then you'll have to pay and get this other part replaced and this other part's more expensive and when i first did this i assumed that if the first repair didn't work and you needed the second part the repair person wasn't going to charge you for the part that didn't fix your problem with your boiler or whatever it was. Then a lot of people in the comments were saying, no, I think the question meant that if the first part doesn't work, you still have to pay for it. And um, yeah, there was basically a disagreement about, do you still have to pay for the first part even if it didn't work and you have to get the second part? And I, I felt that that was very unfair in the question because... Um, um, that's not what happens in real life. You know, if you hire a repair person and the part that they get doesn't work to fix your washing machine or whatever it is, well, they're, they're going to take it out and not charge you for it, you know? And I noticed in the marking scheme I was only looking at a few days ago that they actually gave you marks for both interpretations. And so it got me thinking about what could be in this exam that is also going to have more than one answer or problems in the marking scheme now i started with uh paper one and i could find three things in paper one that i think they'll have to correct in the marking scheme and i couldn't find anything in paper two i think paper two is, is okay but i want to point out the three things in paper one that i found that i think they'll have to correct so the first issue was let me scroll down. Here. Um, question 7. So you're told in question 7, Hannah is doing a training session, and during the session her heart rate, our heart rate, H of X, is measured in beats per minute, where X is the time of minutes from the start of the session. For the first 8 minutes of the session... Hannah does a number of exercises. As she does her exercise, her heart rate changes. In this time, in this time, it's given by this formula. In other words, this cubic equation is only modeling her time for the first eight minutes. Why is that important? Because later in the question, it says... Marta does each exercise for a longer time than Hannah. Marta's heart rate is H 0.8x. Right, MX. Now, you could say, uh, it did say in the question here, from 0 to 10. But the problem is that 0 to 10 is referring to the answer. It's saying that the equation that you're supposed to find is for x is between 0 and 10. And the way you find it is by using this formula. But the problem is this formula is not defined between 8 and 10. This h of x um, is only valid up to 8. It's not valid after 8. And again, I'll just go back to the start of the question. For the first 8 minutes of the session... Hannah does a number of exercises. As she does these exercises, her heart rate changes. In this time, HX is given by. There's no doubt about it. This HX is for 0 to 8 minutes. So it means that this equation here later is not valid outside of that range. That the X can only be from 0 to 8. And so you can't actually find the MX here. It's not possible to find an MX where X is between 0 and 10. And they could have easily fixed that. They could have said here, use HX, where HX is now defined, defined from 0 to 10. It's um, not clear. This here 
is referring to this here. This guy here is definitely wrong. So that's definitely a mistake. Uh, this question here technically does have does not have an answer for this question. So my hope is that you just get the automatic marks for this one. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt in my mind that that's definitely a mistake, um, unless they mentioned about the change. But you can see everything up to this point has been zero to eight. So they forgot to update the definition of HX. And this problem could have been prevented if at the very beginning of the question they just said um, this equation is valid for the first 10 minutes of our exercise. But they kept insisting on this being for 8 minutes. So anyways, that's definitely a mistake. Number 2. I don't know if it's a mistake but this question here says use calculus in your solution you may use the information from the graph above which is to scale and i just think the use of the word may here was awfully misleading you see my uh one understanding of this sentence use calculus in your solution you may use the graph is that you could use calculus to get the two roots as at the two turning points, and then you can use the graph to figure out which is the maximum. Which is actually what I thought they were saying. I thought they were saying use calculus to get the two solutions, and then use the graph to figure out which one is the maximum, uh, and which is the minimum, the least and the greatest, which is the maximum, which is the min. So I thought the graph was here to help you determine the max and the min without the need of the second derivative. Um, because we need the second derivative in part E, so it was possible to avoid the use of the second derivative in part D, and I thought that was going on, until people in the comments were pointing out, no, I think uh, this is the least here, which is true. So what they should have said really... Well, they just should have rewritten this I mean, they should have deleted this. And, um, yeah, I think had they deleted that, it would have been clearer. So I don't know if it's a mistake, but perhaps if they feel like the question was so badly written that students who did not use, uh, uh, notice this is the minimum might not lose marks. So I'm hopeful that they will realise that this question could have been written much better, much clearer, and that they'll give students uh, marks here if they say this is the least instead of this one here. So that's the second issue. And then the final issue again, was here. The use of the word period here, which one student pointed out in the comments section. <laughs> so, unfortunately, they literally just asked you to find the period and the range. And I can't remember what the period was. It was something like um, 10 minutes or something like that, wasn't it? Well, whatever it is, I don't remember. But they asked you to find the period. And then they said during a 50 minute period, but they should have used a different word here like duration. Because you could interpret that sentence as meaning the period has changed. That is the period has increased from 10 to 50 minutes. That's a legitimate interpretation. Um, there's an ambiguity here in the English switching from C to D. Previously in part C, period referred to the periodic time, the time for one oscillation, one cycle. And now period here refers to just a generic duration of time. And this is really, really bad English. And again, it makes me think and hope that just like what happened last year where there's two interpretations, I feel like this question should also have two interpretations. 
uh, depending on if you took 50 minutes to mean a 50 minute duration or 50 minutes to mean a new period of 50 minutes. Um, yeah. There were other things I, 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 I this, yeah, I, I dislike what they did with the last question, but I don't think they'll adjust the marking scheme. I just think they were being mean. The three issues I mentioned, I really feel strongly that something in the marking scheme would need to be mentioned about it. Either two interpretations or, you know, two possible answers. Um, that's my thoughts. And, uh, yep, I wonder what you think about that. Thanks for watching.